Welcome back to Living in Spokane, Washington. Today, we're covering our third topic in our First Time Homebuyer series, How Credit Works. This video series covers all the basics to help you get on the right path towards owning a home. We've already talked about how to set up a strong financial foundation, how to save for later, and today we're going to talk about how credit works and the best way to build it up. In future videos, we'll discuss how to get back on track from financial issues, and finally, what the home buying process really looks like. Be sure to stay until the end of the video, that way you can make sure to get all the information you need so your financial future starts out strong. Welcome back to Living in Spokane, Washington. If you're new here, my name's Hunter McKay, and I'm your local real estate broker. Whether you're moving to the area or already a local and just preparing to buy your first house, this is the video for you. Leave me a comment or reach out through the direct message and we'd be happy to get you covered with anything that you need. Before we begin, I wanna emphasize that the information provided in this series is intended for education and entertainment purposes only. I'm a really great real estate broker, but I am not a financial advisor. And it's important to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional to tailor any recommendations to your specific situation. So please reach out to me directly and I'd be happy to give you a recommendation on who you can speak with. I have so many wonderful clients that have operated their entire life in cash and they say, oh, I don't need credit. I don't like credit cards. I just, I pay everything in cash. I don't know what my credit score is. I don't, I don't need debt. The year is 2024, the average income in America is 42,000, and the average home price is half a million. We need some credit, folks. We're not gonna make it without it. My grandparents grew up in a time where you had your checking account and you had your savings account. That was it. There was maybe getting a five-year loan from the builder. Houses also cost $18,000. My Honda cost $38,000. This is why we need credit. It's nice to say, well, I come from a cash family. Most people don't. They have to figure out how can I leverage future debt that I can pay off over time. That way I can have what I need now. That's what credit is. It's using your current capacity to leverage a relationship with someone who has money now, who's willing to give it to you. That way you can go and get something that you need. However, credit is based off of how likely they think you are to pay them back because they're not giving you money for free. They want to make money on the money that they lend you. And so can you pay it back? Are you likely to pay it back? Your credit score tells people how competent you are at repaying loans. That's it. It's not are you a good person. It's how quickly and regularly do you repay large sums of money that people give to you. If you do that often, you have a high credit score. If you don't do that, you have a very low credit score. And so someone who operates their entire life in cash, pays all of their debts, might have a really terrible or no credit score, and it will lead to difficulty in getting credit cards, in getting home loans, in getting car loans. And so if they can't afford to do their entire life in cash, which most people can't, it's gonna become challenging. All right, first we're gonna dive in. How do we get a good credit score? First, let's talk about what credit scores are considered good and what are considered bad. For the sake of getting new loans, we're gonna consider it good because it's good if you can get new loans. When you can't get a, a new loan, it's bad. And so if you're under 600, usually people are not gonna give you new loans. It's going to become challenging. It's also going to be harder to rent if you have a bad credit score. And so you always wanna stay above a 600. If you are already below 600, don't worry, we can help you fix it. But if you are right around 580, we really can already tell that you're doing some things wrong. If you're at maybe a 650, my indication is probably that you're doing things mostly right, but maybe you have too high utilization on your cards. If you're over 700, your credit is good. You're going to get top tier interest rates, you're going to get good discounts, and it's gonna be easy for you to get new lines of credit. And this is because you probably have a little bit low utilization, <laughs> low utilization, and you probably have multiple credit lines that you're making consistent payments on because you can't just have one credit card and have a perfect credit score. If you only have one or two credit cards, you might only be in the 650 range. In order to really maximize and have perfect credit, you should probably have a house loan, you should probably have a car loan, and you should probably have a couple of credit cards. The credit cards need to be below 35%, 
but you also need to have the other loans engaged as well in order to score perfectly and get a 750 or an 800. Most people consider really good credit to be between 720 and 780. It's very rare to have an 800 or above. I've probably only seen it five or six times in my life, and they were very diligent and well-heeled people who worked very hard to get that perfect 800. Um, some of the best scores that I have ever personally had in my life were 750, and I worked my ass off to get there, and I could never get it above a 750, and so I don't really understand how to get to an 800. It seems like leprechaun magic, and so if anyone is sitting in the, in the comment section waiting to give their best feedback, how do you have an 800 credit score? What are the tips and tricks? How do you do it? One of the quickest ways to build credit is by getting credit cards and making sure that they're in good standing. But as we've already talked about in other videos, credit cards are really expensive money. And so it would be good if they did something to benefit us, right? So what is a good credit card? Every situation is different, and so no two cards are created equal or considered good for the same person. I really want to break it down into starter cards, medium cards, and advanced cards. Starter cards are like your Discover Bank card, or your Macy's card, or like if Costco gives you a credit card. It probably has pretty low rewards. Actually, the Costco card is maybe a medium, but we'll get to that. It's a starter card that has low rewards, but probably gives you a higher balance. And you want the highest balance possible on your starter card, not because you wanna use it all, but because you wanna have an ability to use it on things that make sense. If you get a starter card and they only give you $200, then you need to keep it at less than 35% balance. It makes it really hard to keep the right amount of money on that card just because it's an inconvenient amount. If you have a $1,000 card, then you can put $100 on it and you can go grocery shopping or you can put a tank of gas and it becomes a little bit easier to use that card for one thing weekly and then make small payments on it. That way you can record that balance and improve your credit. So the best starter cards are gonna be high balance, but you wanna use very, very little of them. And so if you think that you can't be responsible with that high balance, maybe let someone else in your family hold on to it that is responsible and only get it from them when you're gonna use it for that exact thing. The goal here is to build your credit. It's not to spend a thousand dollars or spend a bunch of money. After you've begun to build your credit, maybe you have one or two different store cards or maybe you had to go and get one of the bank reserve cards where you give them some money up front. Either way, you'll be paying on these cards usually for three to six months while your score improves. Then you can start applying for your medium quality cards. These are ones that might have higher balances, but really what you're going for is rewards and points, things that you're going to use on a daily basis. I have a Citibank card that gives me 2x points on gas and groceries, and so that's the card that I use for gas and groceries. I also have US bank credit cards that are strictly for emergencies. They have extremely high balances, that way I can get myself out of oopsies, but they also have no benefit to me. They give me very terrible points, I don't get any rewards, and so there's no reason for me to use those cards unless I absolutely have to, but they make for great emergency funds if I absolutely have something go wrong. The final category of cards is what I'll call advanced cards. They tend to have annual fees, and so they actually cost money to own on top of the money that you spend and the interest that they charge you. They might have high or low balances depending on your credit availability, but the important thing here is that you need to be aware that there's a cost, usually $500 or $1,000 a year to own this card. And so what are the benefits that it's giving you? A great example is the Amex Platinum. It's a $500 a year card, requires really good credit to receive, but if you get it, it pays for a lot of travel perks throughout the year. I think it pays for a T-Mobile thing. There's something about Netflix. There's all of these hidden things that it pays for if you set it up right and you read the fine print. My partner Ryan is a master at reading the fine print. I am a master at ignoring it. <laughs> a lot of you might be asking, well, Hunter, why do you pay $500 for the Amex Platinum? Why not just use one of the other credit cards? It's because Ryan did read the fine print and he has a list of things that we have to do throughout the year in order to maximize the utilization of that card. I never had one because I never wanted to read the fine print. And so I always just looked for the highest return on points. Travel cards were always my favorite because I traveled a lot and I wanted to get all of the points back for flight miles because the transference between point and flight miles was greater than the transference of points to real money. But Ryan has gone through and looked at all of the different benefits that come through, and he has determined that it would cost more than $500 for us to replace those benefits, so we keep the card. 
There are three other big ways to build credit. The first one is getting added on as an authorized user in a family card. We've talked about that in a previous video, but basically what it means is one of your family members already has good credit and they have a credit card that you can be signed as an authorized user and that credit card reports to the credit bureaus. The reason that this is a benefit is if your family member has had a credit card for 20 years and you get added on, and that's 20 years of good payment history, after a few months, you get to indicate that you have all of that good payment history. And it will weigh and give you a good credit score that is much more commensurate with your family's score rather than your starting off score, which might be very low. Two other ways to build credit are getting a car loan or getting a home loan. Obviously, getting a home loan is the point of this entire series, so it's not where we're starting. But if you already own a car, you could actually go and refinance that car and even though, yes, I know, you're like, but Hunter, I already own the car, why am I gonna be paying interest? It's back to that original game of why do we build credit? Because we're proving to people that we can repay large sums of money. If you already own your car, take it into a bank and say, I'd like to refinance this car. Get the lowest interest rate that you can and the money that they give you from that refinance, put it in a savings account and use it to pay back that loan. Your credit will improve. I personally believe you should never have a paid off car because it is the strongest indicator of good credit. If you have all paid off vehicles, you must have more credit cards to make up for that loss of debt. And the credit card debt is much, much higher than the interest rate on the car. So let your money stay invested and pay off the car slowly. Thanks so much for staying till the end of the video. I'd love to hear all of your tips and tricks on how to build good credit. Drop the comments below.